Hi, this next video is uh, to do with fractions, and we're just going to do a quick review of operations that we learned in uh, elementary school to do with fractions. Okay, first thing is, let's just uh, review what a fraction is. So I'm going to write a fraction. This is 9 over 4. Fractions are always written as a division, so this line here indicates a division. Um, and uh, think of them as 9, this would be called 9 fourths. Uh, what it means is a fourth is if you take a, take a circle and you split it into four parts, four equal parts, and this, one, this part here is called a fourth. Nine fourths would mean nine of these. So how many circles would that make up? Well, each four of them would make up a full circle. So nine fourths would be uh, four of them over here. I'd have another circle with another fourth, so that would be eight fourths. And then I'd have another circle with just one fourth shaded in. So this was what it would look like uh, in terms of circles. How many circles are there? There are two full ones and one-fourth of a circle. So this one over here, uh, this representation is called a, an improper fraction, and this one over here is called a mixed. Mixed fractions have a whole number part and a fraction part. Improper fraction has just the fraction part, and the numerator is greater than the denominator. Okay, so we just have to uh, remember how to convert from one to the other. So let me pick a different one. Let's pick um, 13 over 3. Okay, so how do we convert that? Well, we have to see these are thirds, and we have to see how many thirds uh, would go into a whole. So three thirds go into a whole. So how many whole circles would there be in 13? So how many times would this 3 go into 13? 3 divides into 13 4 times with 1 left over uh, as remainder. So this is going to equal to, um, you can split it out this way if you prefer, just so you can see where it's coming from. We can divide this out into two parts, 12 thirds and 1 third. They add up to 13 thirds, but the 12 thirds is just a 4, it's a whole 4, and then you have 1 third left. So 13 thirds is uh, 4 and 1 third. Okay, alternatively, let's go the other way. Let's convert four and one third. Um, put it back into thirds. How many thirds is this whole number four? Well, each hole is three thirds. So if you have four holes, that's 12 thirds. So four and one third is equal to 12 thirds plus this other one third for a total of 13 thirds. Yes, there is a little system that says you take this number and multiply it by this number and then add that. So 3 times 4 plus 1. Um, yeah, it works, but in math it's always important to understand why things work rather than memorizing rules because then we might use the rules wrong uh, or use them at the wrong time. Okay, so, um, so that's how you convert back and forth. Now what happens if something is negative? Let's say I put negative 4 and 1 third. <coughs> Would you multiply 3 times negative 4 and add 1? Does that work? Um, <coughs> 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, and if you add 1, you get negative 11. You would have negative 11 thirds, which is actually not correct. The fact that there's a negative sign in front is really quite irrelevant. It's this entire quantity is exactly the same, except that your final answer is negative. So when you have a conversion, working with fractions, and you have a mixed fraction, and there's a negative, you just ignore it. I'm going to put my pencil on it so it's not there. There. It's not there. All right? Ignore it. And then convert the fraction into improper. So this will be 13 over 3. And then take that negative sign and then put it on. Okay, so that negative sign does not affect the quantity. It only affects the sign. So your calculation of the quantity doesn't change. All right, so that is conversion of fractions. We'll do now um, addition. Okay, so that's conversion. Let's do addition. So addition is if, let's say, you're adding thirds. So we had, we just saw, 12 thirds plus 1 third is 13 thirds. What happened? You keep the denominator the same. So we're still adding thirds. Just like if I said 12 pizzas plus 1 pizza is 13 pizzas. The unit is still the same. So the unit is still thirds, and the denominator stays the same. And then you have 13 on top. But let's say the units were different. So let's say these are thirds, and these are fifths. Okay, well, we can't add them. So uh, let, me th let me mix some numbers up here. Let's go 2 thirds and 7 fifths. 
okay? So we can't add thirds and fifths because they're different from each other. They're different items. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to make them into the same item so that we can add them. And that's, uh, you may have heard of, it's called finding a common denominator. So what we do is we say, what's a fraction that's equivalent to two-thirds but um, has the same denominator as as 7 over 5? Meaning, can I write two-thirds as something over 5 so that this is also over 5? Is there a way to do this, is to write it as something over 5? Let's see. 3 times uh, what number gives you 5? Well, it would be uh, a, a, not a whole number, um, so it would be it would be kind of messy. But is there a denominator we can pick that if we multiply three by some whole number, we'd get that denominator, and if we multiply five by some whole number, we'd get that denominator? And the answer is the denominator would be whatever you get when you multiply three times five. So fifteen would be is called the common denominator. And 15 is nice because 3 times 5 is 15. To get a fraction equivalent to 2 thirds, I would say, well, if 3 times 5 is 15, then if I take the 5 and multiply it by the 2 and get 10, these two are called equivalent fractions. So I have uh, a pizza or a circle or whatever you want to call it. I can divide it into three pieces and color in two of them. That would be two-thirds. Okay. Now, if I divide this pizza into 15 pieces, that would be the same as taking each third and dividing it into each one of them into another five. Okay, so one, two, three. So now what I've done is I've divided each third into another five for a total of 15 pieces. How many are shaded? If you count them, I've shaded 10. So, 2 thirds and 10 over 15 is the same thing. So the way you work with denominators is you pick a denominator that's the same for both. You usually get it by finding the lowest common multiple of the two. Um, if, you, if you can't think of anything, if this was a 6, you could pick 6 for both. But because they have no um, factors in common, then you, you'll, pick, you'll just multiply them together to get a common denominator. Let's do the same thing with 7 over 5. 5 times what is 15? 3. So 7 times 3 is 21. This fraction is equivalent to this fraction. Now we have our denominators are, are the same, which means we're adding the same things, the same items, or the same units. We're adding fifteenths. So we can add up how many fifteenths do we have? I have 10 fifteenths and I have 21 fifteenths for a total of 31 fifteenths. Okay, and that's ad adding. And subtracting is exactly the same. I could do um, 2 thirds minus 7 over 5. Uh, and then that same thing, I'd have to pick the common denominator. I would have to see what, does the, what do I do to the denominator to get there. It's times 5, so do the same to the top. This is times 3, so do the same to the top. And now I just do it as a subtraction. 10 minus 21 is negative 11 over 15. Okay, that's addition and subtraction of fractions. Let's uh, do multiplication and division. Okay, so multiplication is easier than adding and subtracting. So I'm going to take two fractions, two thirds, and I multiply by four fifths. All you do with multiplication is you multiply straight across. So two times four is eight. 3 times 5 is 15. Done. Okay. If one of them is negative, so let's say the first one is negative, negative 2 thirds, you ignore the negative, work with the number part, and then evaluate your answer. You have negative times positive, then the final answer is negative. So deal with the sign later, because the sign has nothing to do with the quantity. Okay. Uh, if both were negative, your final answer would be positive. So you'd work with the numbers and then deal with the sign at the end. Um, a really, really important thing that we're going to be working with a lot is um, canceling when you're multiplying. What this means is this. If I gave you to multiply 12 over um, 55, so I'm just making up numbers that are really big here, times 25 over 4. Okay. 
Okay, so imagine I gave you to do this. Um, and say I said to you, okay, no calculator. So if you were to multiply these, these ones out, so 12 times 25, you're going to get a big number. You'll get 300. And if you multiply down below here, you're going to get another big number, 220. And now you'll be stuck with uh, having to reduce the fraction 300 over 220 because it can be reduced. So we're going to do it, um, we'll do it two ways. So we'll do it with the reducing way and then we'll do it with a faster way. So the first way is multiply straight across, you get 300 over 220. Now we need to reduce the fraction. Reducing means that you can simplify the fraction by if there's something that is uh, that divides evenly into the top and the bottom, you can divide both by that number and make the fraction equivalent but smaller. So I see these two zeros, so right away I know I can divide top and bottom by 10. So that's 30 over 22. And what else? Uh, what number would divide evenly into both? I think 2 divides evenly into both, so I will divide top and bottom by 2, and I get 15 over 11. And I, anything else that I could divide into the top and bottom, or numerator and denominator, so that fraction is fully simplified. Now, let's do this again in another way that is much, much easier, more efficient, and you uh, completely avoid the large numbers. Okay. What happens is this. We just reduce fractions by saying if anything is, if, any, if there's a number that divides evenly into numerator and denominator, we can divide both by it and reduce the fraction. When you multiply, everything that's currently in the numerator will end up in the numerator because we just multiply across. Same thing with the denominator. So it doesn't matter if a number is in inside this fraction or inside this fraction we can still reduce any numerator with any denominator. So we can try to reduce this way, and it won't reduce, but we can also reduce this way, which means the 12 and the 4, uh, there is a number that divides evenly into both, and that is 4. So what I can do is I can divide the 12 by 4, and that leaves me with a 3. I can divide the 4 by 4, and that leaves me with 1. Do it again with 25 and 55. Is there a number that divides evenly into both? And the answer is sure, 5. So I'll take 55 and divide it by 5, I get 11. And 25 divided by 5, I get 5. So I have actually already reduced it. I just reduced it numerator and denominator from different fractions. But it doesn't matter as long as you have multiplication. Okay, And so that is equal to... Now I just multiply straight across, so I'm left with 3 times 5, 15, and 11 times 1, 11, done. Okay. Not only is this more efficient and avoids large numbers, but this uh, type of uh, cancelling while multiplying has is very, very useful in science. Uh, you will see in your science classes it will be done with units, working with units, cancelling. Um, saves a lot of time and also helps you to arrive at the correct unit for your final answer. Um, also when you get to grade 11 math there is a lot of this happening so get into the habit of doing this. Uh, you can avoid using a calculator in most cases when the numbers are big if you reduce before doing the multiplication. Okay so that's multiplication. The last thing is division and division is very similar to multiplication so I'm going to do, I'll use the same numbers as before, I'll do two-thirds divided by 4 over 5 and what happens with division is um, division is equal to, is, is the same thing as multiplying by what we call the reciprocal of 4 over 5 so you keep the first number the same and you multiply by the reciprocal the reciprocal is the same fraction but um, flipped numerator and denominator. So I'm going to write here multiply by the reciprocal. Know this word because we're going to use it a lot. Multiply by the reciprocal. Once you have the reciprocal you can multiply straight across because it's just multiplication. So hey why don't we use the little the little cancelling thing. I notice I have a 2 and a 4. So I could multiply straight across and get 10 over 12 and then reduce 10 over 12. But right away I see there's a 2 and a 4. It's a wonderful opportunity to divide both of them by 2. And now when I multiply straight across I get 5 over 6 and there's nothing to reduce. 
Okay, so now you've seen uh, you've seen all of them. Sometimes there's going to be um, questions where you have to use the correct order of operations and with fractions. So get used to that. Okay, so please practice and uh, good luck. Thanks for watching.